and welcome to this week's Game Dev Podcast. I'm Lex and I'm here with Libby. Now, this week Libby's making a fantastic and triumphant return from the world of dental surgery. How was it, Libby? Was it everything you'd hoped for? Do you it feel was traumatic. So traumatic. traumatic. Yeah. Well, at least you didn't have any nasty side effects. And you are better for it now. Yes, I've still got a little bit of swelling. Well, which I, I was will... pointing out, but fine if i angle myself presumed you'd always look like that no there is still a little bit of swelling but i'm feeling much better thank you that's good that's good well maybe i can distract people with this random white spot in my beard which i don't know where it's come from that's old age but uh, do you think i should dye it oh that, that would look that ridiculous just, wouldn't it, it, it wouldn't. it's pitch black <laughs> just get black anyway we're on about the game dev podcast yes. not our aging ailments so libby what would you like to discuss <clears throat> this week so this week we're going to talk about whether or not you should do early access. Early access. Now, that's a hot topic. It is. It's becoming increasingly popular with the indie game developers. What do you think? I mean, before we even get into it deeply, early access, do you have much experience with it yourself or is it something that you know of but don't really... I know of it. I haven't launched anything myself in early access, but... I can definitely see the benefits and the cons of it as well. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of pros, but I think it can be a lot more work than it's cut out to be. But I suppose that's what we're going to cover today. So let's fire away. Do you have a talking point to start off with? Well, let's think about what early access is, shall we? Yeah. So sure. early access is releasing a game before it's finished so that you can gain feedback, basically, on the product itself. Mm. But it's not just for gaming feedback. A lot of people do it as well to help raise funds to further the the game's development. A lot of people don't like working with developers or can't work with a developer for whatever reason. So by launching Early Access, you're getting a bit of money coming in, which can hopefully push the game over the edge. Yeah, so so let's talk about the pros then, shall we? Should we start with funding? Funding? You can get some money. There you go. So Early Access can help provide a revenue for developers that are, you know, if you don't have another job or whatever and you or you need the funds just to help progress your game along it can be good good source of revenue to do early yeah. access yeah it can be it can be um i see i was about to jump straight into a con there but do you have any other pros for early access i mean so we're getting the game out there getting a bit of exposure a bit of marketing a bit yeah. of money hopefully so community feedback is another big reason why you would possibly go for early access because you are showing it to what you hope is going to be your audience. So you can tweak it to make it more in line with your audience yeah. and also get the feedback. You know, they can check for bugs and glitches, anything like that, and they can give you that feedback so you can fix it there and then. Mm. But there is a con with that. Go on, let's let's talk cons already then. You're getting player feedback. Now, I'm not being facetious. <laughs> what I mean by that is sometimes you're going to get a lot of people that just like to cause trouble you know yeah. you're going to get people that despite your game is in early access they're stated. going to expect a finished product exactly you know you've got a yeah. big old we're an early access flag on steam why is the game not finished why are there yeah. bugs why are there glitches why can't i do every single thing under the sun from day one <coughs> because it's in early access but they're just not reading it there is still a big old expectation that when a game is available, even in early access, that it's a complete experience. And I think that's going to catch a lot of people and a lot of developers out. So my first warning would be, if you go in early access, just be aware, you're going to get a lot of comments. There, yes, there is the potential that you're going to get a lot of negative feedback. So take it all with a grain of salt mm. because you're aware that your product is in early access and this is not a finished product and they're just not really listening in that case. Yeah, that, that, that is the trouble. But despite that, you will get also get a lot of good feedback. Yeah, you, know? you will. And you'll gain a lot of feedback that's actually going to be really helpful to your development as well. Not to mention marketing. If people are loving your yeah. game, they will do the marketing for you. And the thing is, even if your game is not perfect, even if there are some pretty big bugs, bugs that you didn't catch for one out there, as long as you're fixing them quite quickly, promptly, and even if you can't fix them immediately, make a community post. Tell people, I'm aware of this issue. Thank you for reporting it. I will get it fixed. That's good. And that brings us on to our next point. Community. 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 So you're already building up a community of people that are interested in your game and want to see it progress, want to see it finished. And they're giving you valuable feedback. And that's brilliant because they are your audience. You want to make them happy. These are the people you want to please. So if you can be getting, you know, what they like and what they don't like back in advance, you can make more of it or less of it, you know, depending on on the feedback. Yeah. Which is good because ultimately you want to cultivate a community. The community is what makes a game go from being a little game an amazing game 
take you know good example of an early access game minecraft everybody knows minecraft yeah everyone knows minecraft everybody's played minecraft that was an early access from my thing i'm gonna catch myself out of 2009 to quite some time was it 2012 eventually launched? i have no idea i don't know why you're looking at me for that well i was, I was hoping for an answer <laughs> no sorry uh, but it went through so many iterations of development and it was that early access oomph that really gave it that initial push to propel itself and yeah well, we and now it's a Minecraft. huge name isn't it yeah is it the number one best-selling game of all time i think it is i think it? it is still yes and if it's not what the hell's gonna be it? i mean i'm gonna be honest from minecraft you haven't just got minecraft anymore have you because i've spent the past a week and a half building minecraft lego for my oh, daughter oh for your daughter okay. for my daughter because she'd mixed all her sets and she doesn't have the patience to go through each set and rebuild it what, what do you do if a creeper comes along does it blow up the lego and you've got to there are ways of blowing up your Lego pieces. There actually oh, I was are. Joking. There actually no. Is. So I mean, it's not quite as dramatic as the game itself, obviously. Yeah. But no, they there will be li- there's little levers and things, and you can there'll be TNT, oh, and it will just blow up. Cool. It's, they're really well made. Oh. Uh, but yeah, that's Lego. <laughs> I'm going on a tangent. Yes. Yeah, so early access can be a really <laughs> big boon for you. You get lots of feedback, and hopefully you'll be there. And with any luck, your game will be just as successful as Minecraft. But no, jokes aside, uh, Notch did a really good job with that. I mean, it, yeah. it, he cultivated the community early on, got the feedback, <coughs> got the, the good, the bad, and made the game what it is today. I, he, you know, he really yeah. did exceptional work with it. Really exceptional. So that's community. Yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to add to the community point? No, I don't think so at this point. I think we should start to touch more on the cons, though. Unless you have more to add to uh, No, I Rose. think community is great. Why, why? What cons are you thinking? What do you think I've missed? For well, me, the biggest feedback... I'll have ask you a question and start talking to us. <laughs> For me, the biggest <laughs> feedback is, is people are very demanding. When you put your game in early access, they ain't going to care that it's early access. They want the finished game. Yeah. And they are going to want constant feedback. I'm talking weekly. You know, if you can't do weekly, then at the very least monthly feedback of, we want new patches, we want new yeah. fixes, we want updates, we want blah, 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 blah. People are very demanding, more demanding of early access and games. this actually takes me to the point I was going to make is one of the cons that I'm you know aware of is a dramatic loss of trust Ooh. and it, that generally comes from you from the developer not being able to provide enough feedback or blog or you know well i suppose when a game's released if you're not communicating what you're doing in particular yeah yeah i, I was gonna say when a game's fully released like actually released <laughs> to the public people want bug fixes and they want you know, big updates, yeah. you know, big features, DLC packs, just expansions. You still get expansions. I don't think you still get any more. I mean, you don't really see any more, do you? Do you get battle passes? You still passes, get Sims. Season passes. Sims gets expansions still. I think so. Well, there you go. But that's what people want. But yeah. with early access, they want all of that. And then they want extra <laughs> little features. And they want it constantly. They, you know, they, yeah. they don't want to wait six months or, you know, to the next quarter for their updates. They want it now. Yes. They report a bug on Monday. They want it fixed by Tuesday. <laughs> it's a lot more demanding releasing a game in early access. But don't think I'm just being negative about it. I've released games in early access. <laughs> I like early access. I think it's good. Just don't fool yourself into thinking, I'll just release in early access and that'll be it. <laughs> no, 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 it's, no. It's more work. It's scary. Because yeah. people are way more demanding. And there is always the risk as well. Somebody once said it, and I can't think of the name. They said, your game needs to pretty much be 99% finished, put it into early access. Because that is still your launch. You only get one launch. Whether it's in early access or the finished game, that's your launch. Just bear that in mind. So don't release a half-baked product. But I mean, I can think of loads of games that have done really well. Phasmophobia, that game where you hunt ghosts. Uh, what's it called? Is it Nordheim, the Viking survival game? You've never played, but it's a great no. little game. <laughs> Lethal Company. There's loads and loads of games. I mean, there's definitely are... a good few games that have yeah. launched in early access and been very successful. And a lot of these games never really leave early access. It's a bit of a bizarre it, one. Yeah, it is weird, actually, when you think about it like that. But, you know, a lot, a lot of games never do. Um, However, there is, hmm. you know, there is another risk that because it is becoming increasingly po- popular to launch in early access, that it's now becoming very overcrowded. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's not the big thing it once was. No. So, you know, it is heavily saturated, which in turn obviously makes it much harder for your game to get noticed in the first place. So that's also something to bear in mind. Yeah, yeah, oversaturation is definitely a problem. 
I mean, that's a problem across most things within the gaming community these days. Well, oversaturation. It's so accessible these days, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, yeah, it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? It's good that everybody gets a chance. It's bad that everybody gets a chance <laughs> because you're going to get not a lot of Not everyone people. has wonderful ideas. Well, and... no, it's not just that, but a lot of people just, you know, do asset flips and half-baked products yeah. and chuck it out there. And then you've got, you know, a little Timmy's <laughs> game that he's made on a Sunday afternoon, which is, let's be honest, total crap. And you've got to compete with that on launch day. And it's... Not fair to people that have spent the last few years making a game and putting it out there. And I mean, really honing their skills in to make it a really polished product yeah, as well. But the first game this person encounters on Monday morning when the game's launched is Little Timmy's Crab. And he's like, you know what, I'm done. Moves on. Yeah. And I can imagine. I mean, I'm fortunate enough, I've never actually experienced that. But going up against... That, that must really, be really disheartening. You know, I did see uh, there was a young lady on Twitter, now X, of course. I, I really don't get that. Are we calling it X or Twitter? Anyway, whatever. That, that social platform that used to be known as Twitter, at least... Um, and she was talking about the fact that EA launched 10 games on the same day she launched her game. And she was really devastated because her game was doing really well. And then, bang, 10 EA games immediately pushed her right down the bottom of the new Oh, that must be awful. She was really upset. I mean, the community on, on what was known as Twitter is really nice. So if you're not on there, I would actually recommend it. Look up the specific game dev channels. They're really supportive, really nice. Really That's welcome. good. Yeah, generally. Um, they, they pushed her up. They helped her out. They, you know, yeah. Lots of extra wish lists and all things which pushed her up. But my point is... If you launch your game, whether it's an early access or a full release, on the wrong day or against lots of competition, it can really smack your bum. Just be careful. Look out for the big AAA launches. They're your main pain points. Yeah. But it is what it is. I mean, the big boys used to. I don't know if it's... Still, you know, I really should have checked this out. They used to release their big games on a Tuesday. And I don't know if that's still the fact or not. So maybe releasing on another day is a good idea. Yeah. Wouldn't recommend a weekend because weekend be bad. Don't ever launch on a Friday because who wants to fix stuff on a Friday? So you want to go for another day of the week that's mm. not a Tuesday would be my guess. But do check that just in case I'm mistaken. And the big game well, we don't like Tuesdays day. anyway, do we? Bad luck Tuesdays. Bad luck Tuesdays. Bad luck Tuesdays. <laughs> if anything goes wrong, it's always it's a always Tuesday. Always a Tuesday. Always. Always a Tuesday. That's why we never record on a Tuesday. Never record on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta record on a good Wednesday. Wednesday's, Wednesday's good. Wednesday's yeah. good. What's your next point, Libby? Well, we've talked about the pros, we've talked about the cons. Let's assume that you've decided you want to go into early access. What can we do to make it more successful? What can for you? we do, Libby? So What can we do? Tell us. Give yourself a clear roadmap. Clear roadmap to what you want to achieve. You know, you still need to have those points of So roadmap. January 1st, early access. February 30th, oh, February 28th, there we go. Full release, roadmap, done, right? No, oh. you need a lot more detail than that. You know, you need to be thinking... End of January update. Well, yeah, actually, that kind oh, of... Okay. But you, you do need to be kind of... You need to go into it knowing full well that you are going to have to give regular updates. The people that are testing your game and playing your game in early access, they are going to want weekly updates from you. Weekly updates, yeah. Weekly, at the very least. I so mean, like it, you said, people are demanding. So be prepared to do that. This written roadmap, which I presume is publicly available, do you think it's acceptable just to have your major releases jotted down, mm -hmm. you know, every couple of weeks or end of a month or whatever, and then weekly bug fixes update, bug fixes yeah. update? Just that, that would... That yeah. would be acceptable because people know what's coming. And the biggest thing, though, is actually stick to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, you've got to push yourself. And again, this is early access con. It is hard work. Yeah, so... As we keep saying, it's very demanding. It is Your very hard work. It's very demanding. But by giving yourself that roadmap as well, you're re it means that you've got something to stick to as well. And even if you do have delays for whatever reason, just say... I've had a delay, you know, something's happened external that I can't control. It's out of my control. Can't release the update this Friday. Got to floss the cat. Floss the cat? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, as long as you tell them what you're doing, yeah? Well, you don't need to tell them what you're doing. It's, you know, it might be a personal matter. You might have had a death in the family for all they know. It doesn't matter. The point is you just say, can't do the really, you know, can't do the bug fix this week going to push it to next week really sorry plan to get back on track from then yeah just not flossing the cat grandma's dead <laughs> oh dear god <laughs> no we do not tell people personal stuff like that that is a bad thing to do on the internet <laughs> it is <laughs> it really is yeah jokes aside but no so 
give yourself a roadmap and be prepared to give at least weekly updates. What do you think about, I'm going slightly oh back a bit. Where are we going no, now? no, no, it's all fine. Negative feedback that you get, because you're going to get yeah. some feedback. Mm -hmm. You, I'll, I'll tell you what I think, and you tell me if you disagree. When you're getting blocks of feedback, the first thing to realise is if somebody's written a big block of feedback, they are passionate. Whether that's good or bad, they are passionate. Even if it's a horrible negative post, if they've spent several paragraphs <coughs> writing, as long as it's not, you know, four paragraphs of why you're a, um, hmm, then, you know... <laughs> If it's about the game and not you personally, if somebody ever pers comments on you personally, just disregard that person. Yeah. It's irrelevant. But if they make a full comment post, even if it's, I don't like the game, I don't like the speed, I don't like the graphics, I don't blah, 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 blah. That's actually fine. They've spent their time to do that. Respond to them in kind. Respond to them saying, thank you for your feedback. I'm sorry you don't like this. I've done this because of that. I'm planning on changing this for that. And just give them some feedback. Do this with all of your posts. If there is constructive feedback, reply to it. Yeah. If somebody's just calling you a C word, don't just delete it because just think of this way is there any benefit that can come from this comment no. if there is no benefit whatsoever just delete it nobody's going to gain from it if somebody comes up just saying this is the best game i've ever had yay that's a wonderful feedback it's great for you enjoy them bask yeah. in them unfortunately you won't get as many of them as you'd like but enjoy them and just reply back thanks for your feedback try to respond to every comment people love that they love seeing the developer commenting so if it's good if it's as simple as i love your game Perfect, thank you for your feedback. If it's a four paragraphs of why your game sucks, is it actionable advice they're giving you? If it is, you respond back in kind. Thank you for your points. Go through each point, nailing them. If you disagree with them, that's fine as well. Mm. Thank you for your feedback on X. However, I decided to go with why is the solution because of reason Z. If you can do that, they now understand your thoughts. They might come back with a bit more thought, you know, thought and you get some banter. If you respond to them in kind and they come back with a nasty comment, Who's looking bad in this situation? It's still good for you as a developer. But nine times out of 10, if you get a horrible negative comment and then you respond to them nicely, that person will realize you're actually a real person. And they'll come back to you yeah. with a nice, you know, sorry, I didn't mean to be angry. I've had this many times. So somebody says you say horrible. You respond nicely. Sorry, I didn't mean to be angry. I was actually having a really bad day and your game just was the tipping point. I do like your game. I do, you know, still stand by my feedback, but thank you for coming back to me. And you've just won a super fan there. When you respond to somebody, whether it's good or bad, if they like your response, of course, you've got a super fan. And these are the people that are really going to promote your game every opportunity they can. So my point is, and I know I've spoken for a lawyer, my point is all feedback, try to respond to it unless there is no benefit whatsoever. If someone's just being a complete and utter ass, delete the comment, forget it ever happened. But other than that, try to respond. Just wanted to talk about comments there. I noticed. It's important. I mean, no, it, it, it is very important. It's a very valid comment you've made. If you've never put yourself or somebody you love or, or, sorry, make pardon, or something you love <laughs> out on the internet for people to go. Well, that's get, very different. Well, <laughs> I'm not talking about that type of content. But if you put out a project or something you've, you love and you've never had this type of feedback before. It's, it can be very difficult to take criticism the first time. devastating. I mean, again, going off site tangent here, obviously we've been making videos for a while now. When mm -hmm. we first started, there are some people that just don't like me, would you believe? For whatever reason, maybe it's my dashing hair or my beautiful white spot. They just don't like it. But the main thing is I would say as well is in this instance... If they ever touch on a nerve, something which you generally are real sensitive about, like for me, it's my beautiful eyes. You know, if people comment on my on my eyes, I would get upset. Don't ever feed the trolls. If they realise there is something they can actually upset you about for real, they'll keep on it. You'll never, you'll never. Lose yeah, it. you'll so never hear the end of it. If... Don't ever rise to personal attacks. But again, I don't want to go on a full on rant about this. But again, just be aware you are going to get negative comments. Try not to let them hurt you, and it's easier said than done. You do get used to them after a while, but it can be a little bit daunting the first few times. Just don't take it personally. Remember that these people are usually upset about something in their own lives and it passes. But yeah. Right, let's move away from comments. I don't see if you okay. stop yourself. Yeah, let's moving on to the next point. So we've talked about regular updates and having your roadmap. And finally, the big thing, make sure your basic gameplay, all the core gameplay is in place before going into early access. Yeah, the main game is need yeah. to do that, yeah. So are you saying that all that should be left in Alexis is the final graphics? So you can still have a few yeah. placeholder sort of graphics, missing a bit of music, missing a cutscene. Yeah, and you know maybe there's the odd bug glitch here and there, which is obviously perfectly fine and acceptable in early access. But your basic mechanics, your basic gameplay needs to be. So if you're making a racing game, for example, you need place. to be able to finish a track. <laughs> yeah, that would be, be helpful. Lab, yeah, yeah. Is that what you're saying. Yes. But having the engine purring, that's that's fine to not have straight. Yeah. Away. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. But yeah, you, you need the base of the game in place so that people actually have something to work with more than anything. 
So shall we summarise what our thoughts then? Go on then. Would you like to do it or would you like me to? Because I've spoken a lot. You have spoken a lot, but I feel like you're going to do it anyway. <laughs> well, maybe if I just cross my arms, <laughs> I don't see. You're going to go quiet now, aren't you? Because the truth is you like me talking, don't you? Just like our audience. Yeah. So right. anyway, to summarise. <laughs> to summarise, if you want to go into early access, keep in mind there are pros and cons to doing it. But if you are going to do it, have a clear roadmap. Be prepared to give regular updates and make sure your base gameplay is in place before you do it. It's going to be a lot more work than you realise. A lot more. But the main key point, as you just said there, is make sure your main game loops are in place. Yeah. They're ready to go and you go. Anything else you want to add? I, I think I've said enough. <laughs> are I've you said, sure? I've said, I think I've said enough. I mean, I could talk some more if you'd like. No, I think we're done. Would you like to move on to Kickstarter? You got any nice Kickstarters this week for us? All right, let me, let's take a look at Kickstarter this week then. So what have you got for me? Starship Simulator. What is this? I'm guessing it's to do with space. What a remarkable guess, Lex. Well, what can I say? I've seen one or two games out there these days and uh, Clue was in the name. Yeah, a little bit. So what have we got? Tell me about this one. Well, rather than telling you all about it first, should we have a look at the video? I think we should. Let's have a look. You're waiting for me to press play, aren't you? Oh. You ready? I am. I'm ready. Let's Are roll. Are you sure? No. Cool. Full screen. Oh, it's very pretty. I like the logo. That's nice. Yeah, it's well designed, isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> oh, automatic doors. It's the simple things, all right? I'm sure it's no relation, but do you think this guy likes Star Trek? I suspect he probably does. I mean, that is possibly my favourite thing about this particular Kickstarter. What's that? It's coming from Somerset, Lex. Oh, we do like Somerset, don't we? Neighbour of ours, isn't it? It is, just up the road. Oh, it's very pretty, isn't it? I like the design. It's a very clean design game. It is very clean design. And they've put so much effort into the detail, which I think you'll see it a little bit further on. Mm. I would have liked a little bit more going on in terms Disco of... Disco shit. Yeah, fancy colours. Yeah. I would have, yeah, I would have liked to have heard a bit more about it the It would game. be nice to have him talking to us. I say him, is it a he? So it's a husband and wife development team. Oh, how lovely is that? Yeah, it's cute, isn't it? Well, I like that. That's nice. But yeah, they have gone big on detail. Yeah. Do we know what this made? This is made in. Is it Unity? Is it Unreal? Um. Is it a bespoke job? Do you know what? I'm trying to think if I've read that anywhere, and I don't. Well, I'm sure think it'll come I up. have because it doesn't come up on the video. I don't think. This is a nice trailer. The only thing I wish was there was somebody talking, telling me about it. Yeah. Or even. A man with a mustache, perhaps. You and your mustaches. Why don't you grow one? I'll never forget you, Nick. Um, what, what? So why don't you grow one? I don't, no, it wouldn't suit me. No, you'd look ridiculous. I would. I really would. I'm bored of this video now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, so, we're almost done. But yeah, let, we're, we're just, almost at the yeah, end. I'm bored of that now. So they are, I believe, if you'd let it get to the end, they are 51% funded, I think. Yeah, looks like it. Cool. It's got to be about that, isn't it? So they are after £65,000. They have 442 backers and there is still 30 days to go. Yeah, they're doing well, aren't they? They are doing well. I'm surprised uh, Kickstarter jumped on this. With all, we I am love surprised bunch. as well. You know, they but, do like their successful projects. So it's an they? engaging space exploration sandbox. God, did you see that? You just got another backer. Lie. Oh. How exciting. I know. God, congratulations. Yes. <laughs> Hang on, I've got a button for this. There we go. Oh. There we go. Right, carrying on. Fantastic. Do you want to scroll down a little bit? Or should we scroll down? You scroll down. I'll scroll down. Right, so. A new space. I, look oh. at that. That is a good gift. It is, isn't it? It's not too heavy on text. I mean, it's a little bit texty, but that is a nice break up there. I like that. I approve. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? I, I'm just fixated on that gift. It's That's smooth, wonderful. isn't it? Yeah. 
Like, even though, obviously, it's someone walking forwards and then jumping back, it still feels really smooth. Yeah, it's nice. I do like that. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Yeah. So, obviously, basically, what he's saying in this section right here is that there are a lot of space sims out there, which there are a few. I will agree with that. Yeah, there's one or two. Um, but there isn't one that kind of does everything, is what he's getting at. Right. Until now. Until, oh, Until look now, look. Look at that. Until now. So this is an optional video, and I like that he's done it as an optional video yeah. because it's nearly 10 minutes long. Oh, wow. That is quite a bit. Does he talk in that one? He does talk in that one. Okay. So he tells you all about the game, why he's doing it, what he's interested in, what they've done so yeah. far. You know, it's far more in depth and it is him talking about it which is very nice and i like that that's an option there yeah would have yeah. liked to have had him talking in the main video. in the main video yeah. as well yeah but i like that he has at least added it down here yeah okay another nice detailed gif here it's nice isn't it a little bit more text and then so this is so he's talking about the ships here so i quite like that he's gone into the different sections and again, it's not massively text heavy. He's broken it up. So yeah, and, um, I am in awe at how much detail they've put in. Yeah, I was just reading there. As such, we painstakingly design every detail in CAD software before importing it to the game engine. From the routing of individual cables to the height of each individual handle. Wow. He yeah. really is going full depth, isn't he? It does make me wonder because I haven't picked up on it so far. They may have added it somewhere in how long they've been working on it already yeah i mean because i feel like spent a lot of time on it yeah and it does say further down that it is a husband and wife doing that it's their passion and i think that's actually really nice because yeah. it is a project of passion and you can really see that yeah it's nice i mean here they go into the detail of how what they've achieved so far in the ship simulation so i'm not going to go into depth here but obviously they've done quite a lot of work on that that's what they've already achieved and then we go on to galaxy simulation and Again, it, i love the gifts they've peppered in. yeah it they've broken up the text really well they've got a little race characteristic here so there will be alien races which i like and then what they've achieved so far in the galaxy simulation and then we go on to gameplay as well so we've got character detailing we've got more information about the gameplay i mean it is a sand, open sandbox yeah, game yeah and it is predominantly exploration so i don't know at this point and they haven't fully said whether or not it's going to be a case of you know there's going to be quests or anything like that in it i get the impression it probably won't be but you will actually have to maintain your spaceship yeah it's nice i mean they're saying that you've got to go back for fuel and yeah you actually have to maintain things properly and I, I quite like that. Yeah, it, yeah, it does add a nice level to the simulation. Definitely. Yeah, and it, then again, what we've achieved so far in gameplay. So they are listing very clearly what they've already done. Oh, and look at that. Try the demo Try now. the demo. That's nice. And they've got, you know, they've peppered in this image of feedback yeah. they've already yeah, received nice from people cloud. that have yeah. played. And actually, if you read some of these, they've got some fantastic feedback on it already. Yeah. So in addition to making the public uh, public demo available, they're also completely open development. So you can follow on socials, especially Discord, and see that they actively share everything they're working on. So they are really in touch with their community. That's and that nice. is fantastic. That, that follows on what we were saying earlier. That's yeah, really good. Really, yeah. really good. And you know, clearly they are doing a lot of updates as well, which is brilliant. We've then got information about the backer rewards that start at five pounds. We've got £10, 25 So these are realistic backings as well that people yeah, can afford. Definitely. So what's the first one you can get the game at? Uh, let's have a look. So the first one is... Oh, there we go, 25 by the looks of it. Base game free. Yeah, there we go. That's about right, isn't it? But and, yeah. And the first expansion included as well. Well, that's nice. And you think that actually games these days go at like £50 pound oh, starting. Yeah. You're joking, aren't you? Didn't you see the recent ones? are going at 70. 70 I mean, yeah. that's just ludicrous. It's insane. So actually, the game for £25, bargain. With, with the first expansion. With the first expansion. So, you know, obviously they've then got the more pricier ones. Rear Admiral. <laughs> but 
I think they are well-rounded, actually. Yeah. I think they are well thought out. They've been very clear. They've got clear structure of what's going on. I like the fact that they've kept in the theme of the naming of these tiers as well. I yeah, really like it's that. nice. It just shows a lot of thoughts gone into yeah. it. Yeah. I think this is a really well put together Kickstarter. Yeah, I think so. I think this is another one I'll back, actually. It's right up my street. Yeah, really good. I mean, I'm not massively into space games, but actually, I could see myself playing this. Yeah. I could, genuinely. So, you know, here they're talking about the project funding. So they've taken into account taxes and fees as well, not just the fact that they want money, which a lot of Kickstarters do. Yeah, they've yeah. actually thought about all the additional costs and things. They've got um, realistic for them. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Goals. Stretch goals. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm after. Stretch goals. They've got realistic stretch goals for and them. they've avoided your pet peeve as well. They're actually showing what you get in the stretch goals rather than it being yes. a glazed out. You hate that, don't you? Well, it annoys me a little bit. I mean, I get why they why people do it. It's just, it annoys me a bit. So platform and price, it's currently a Windows PC title and they're Come distributing on Steam, it on yeah, Steam. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Multiplayer and achievements also make use of Steam's backend services. And here they are. Oh, look at that. That's a nice picture to see the couple together. That's good. That is nice. But do you know what? They're real people. And it's really nice to see that, actually. Looks like they started at Mid-Plague, which was good in 2021. <laughs> Mid-Plague. I like well, that. you know, COVID, you know. Um, yeah, it looks like they've really tried it. Studios mission to create a deep and engaging sci-fi experience. Well, it certainly comes across like they're... So actually, achieving. they've only been doing it since 2021. So I would say what they've achieved between the two of them is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, no, they're doing a really yeah, good job. They are doing this. a yeah. great job. And I'm glad they put a picture of them up, but that's nice. Yeah, I think it's a really nice touch. And it's not your generic mugshot picture either. And it's nice that they've got some YouTubers there. I mean, the only one I recognise there is Obsidian Ant. He's really big in the space game genre, so it's great that they're getting some coverage from him. Yeah. I'd love to hear what he said. Yeah, that's that's really nice. It's that's actually a really respect. nice thing that they've added media coverage, because you don't see that very often. No, and I think people should make more of it. Oh, look, there's a link to his video. And, oopsie. There's a... Oh, dear oh, What me. are you I'm, doing? I'm going mad. Out there's control. a link to his video as well. <laughs> so, yeah, and then he's, you know, obviously put all these videos at the end as well. So... I like that he's put it at the end. It's They're just optional. More evidence that it's real. You yes. Know, it's not just some tangible product. Absolutely. I mean, this, I have every confidence in this guy that he will finish it because just. You can from this. see the passion from it. Well, here we go. Risks and challenges. Beyond the typical risks associated with any video game development, our biggest challenge by far is the size of our team. With Fleet Yard Studios currently consisting of only two full time members, Naturally, with such limited resources, it's often difficult to produce and release content at the candidates we would desire. What we lack in size, however, we more than make up for in sheer amount of passion behind the project and our commitment to see it through to completion. This is our dream game and we're not stopping until it's done. With solid support from the community, we'll be able to employ more full-time developers enabling us to produce more content in a short period of time in addition to expanding the overall skills of the team. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough, yeah. I and mean, they're being I realistic. Can, and I completely agree with them. I, you can see the passion throughout the entire Kickstarter, and I think that's fantastic. I really do. What about AI? I plan to use AI-generated content in my project. What products are we currently using? AI-generated voices from Eleven Labs. That's fair enough. Ellie, are you familiar with Eleven Labs? They're the really good voice ones, actually. Really, really nice. Really I can't say I've looked much into no, AI voice, but that's fair. obviously you have. Well, I, I know I mean, we've used it for certain projects in the past, but things like this, a game like this, if you can have voice acting, which really would add a lot <laughs> to the game, you're going to need a heck of a lot of voice actors. So if you can get AI voice, I don't blame them at all. For no. a small team like this, it makes perfect sense. Do you have the consent of owners of the works that were used to produce AI generated? Well, that's, it's 11 labs. What a ridiculous yeah. question. Um, yeah, no, I think this is a great little project. Thank you for bringing it today, Libby. I think... They're going to do well, or at least I hope they do well. Yeah, so like I said, it's a really top. interesting project. And I may have sounded sarcastic before, but it's genuinely, I think they're going to do really well. I really do. Did you know what? It's actually gone up by five backers since we've been talking. Yeah, uh, well, we saw it <laughs> pop up earlier, didn't we? So, 30 days left. Almost there. Well, they're over 50% now, They're which over is nice. 50%. And they are Starship Simulator on Kickstarter now. If it's a game that you think you'd like... Pop yeah. over, take a look and see for yourself. But I think it's good and I dare say this is one I'll be backing. 
I do agree. I think the Kickstarter page is absolutely fantastic. I wish them all the best yeah. because I think they've really put a lot of effort into this. Yeah. Well, good luck to you guys and we hope to see you again. Bye. Many thanks.